blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory, God's own Son. Risen, raining, the sun shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name, blessed be your name. Say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say. Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say. Blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name in a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. When I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name, when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering, where there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, Still I will say, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. You give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name. In a land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name, when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out. Turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. 
Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me. When the world's all as it should be, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on a road marked with suffering, where there's pain in the offering. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious name. You give and take away, you give and take away. My heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away. There we go. Good morning and welcome. Glad that you're here. Come on in. Uh, please take a seat. Uh, we're ready to get our day of worship started. And uh, as you're coming in, if you will direct your attention to the screen, uh, we have a special video message from somebody that you might recognize. Good morning, Homewood. Mr. Kevin. I am so sorry that I cannot be with you to celebrate this special occasion and milestone day in the history of our congregation. I have complete confidence in Brett, the shepherds, and the admin team that the financial gifts and pledges that we have made today will be used to further God's work in Birmingham and abroad. You have a special guest worship leader filling my shoes today, and I know that you will give him your complete hearts as you worship our God today in my absence. So please sing out loud and strong and really show him how Homewood can celebrate the Lord. I hope to be back with you next week, Lord willing, if my plane here lands safe and sound pretty soon, and uh, I'll be back home then. Until then, I hope you have a blessed week, and I'll see you next week. All right. Kevin is uh, somewhere in between London and Birmingham. We don't know exactly where, but uh, he's on his way back from vacation. But uh, grateful, as Kevin mentioned, to have Breeson Hatcher with us today. He is the worship leader at Highland Church of Christ in Memphis, and uh, he and his family are with us. This is their family. You can see his wife, Jill, uh, son, Dagan, and daughter, Georgia. So grateful to have Breeshan and his family with us today. He is going to be leading us in worship in just a few moments. I hope you grabbed a worship guide on your way in. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in there today. You'll notice an insert uh, for our seniors. Today is our Senior Sunday. It's also what we're saying is Celebration Sunday, which, which should be every Sunday. Uh, but this day in particular, we're celebrating what God has done through our Fuel Division campaign. And we're also going to be celebrating our graduating seniors. Six seniors that will be graduating. And they have been at Homewood, get this, they have been at Homewood for a combined 100 years uh, between the six of them. So uh, they have, they have, most of them have just grown up here, been here for a long time. Uh, I know you'll be blessed by our service today. Uh, also in your worship guide, you'll notice s several announcements, uh, a lot of stuff going as we launch into summer, so please familiarize yourself uh, with, with what's going on here at Homewood. I'm going to ask uh, one of our seniors, uh, Jack Clark, if he'll come up and uh, lead us in a word of prayer. Uh, Jack was baptized this past Wednesday night. And I uh, grew up here, a uh, great guy. And then after Jack leads us, I'm sorry, Jack's going to actually read a scripture. And then uh, Colt Chiselko is going to lead us in a word of prayer. Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. 
Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. If you could bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for this time to worship you. Please be with all the seniors as we move on to the next chapter in our lives. Please help us to keep you first in everything that we do and to always lift your name on high. Please bless everyone here today and guide us and direct us throughout this whole week, Lord. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, if you're a guest of ours, uh, we're especially glad that you're here. I see a lot of family members of our seniors and friends. And uh, if you will, just take a moment and fill out one of the guest cards in the pew rack in front of you. Uh, and then you can drop that in the collection plate when it comes across a little bit later on in the service. Uh, we'll also ask that if you have any prayer requests, and that goes for members or guests, uh, that you will write that on the back of that card. We gather every week as a staff to pray over these cards, and we want to partner with you in prayer. And so if there is something going on in your life, you can be general uh, or specific. Uh, we will lift that up in prayer this week. And so you can place that card in the basket when it comes around in just a little bit. If you will, stand with me. A lot of guests here today. Let's get to know someone we don't. Joy of the Lord will be my strength, and I will not falter, I will not faint. He is my shepherd. Thank you. 
Before we jump right into this next, and I just want to tell you how grateful I am to be here with you. And just take a second and breathe. Me, not you. Or keep breathing. <laughs> but I just need to breathe. I just need to breathe. This, I'm so thankful to be here. I do this every week at Highland Church in Memphis. But you go to another family, and it's like, it's, I don't know. It's like I step up here, and it's like I've never done it before. <laughs> you get nervous and all these. But you know what? The Lord um, is in this place. The Lord is present because his people are here. We sing these songs because of him, to honor him, to him, for him, and through Jesus Christ. And that's all I want to do this morning is be here with you as we worship together as a family of God. And enjoy this time because the joy of the Lord is my strength. There's nothing in this world that brings me more joy than knowing he is here, he's present, and he lives inside of me. So let's sing. Let's sing this morning. So thankful that you're here. Come worship Christ the King. Alleluia, amen. And praises to him we bring. Sing hallelujah. Christ, we sing a 
church. You can have a seat. You can have a seat. Huh. We, um, if there are any guests in here, especially first-time guests, we, uh, I know here in my church family at the Highland Church of Christ, we enjoy a time together that we call communion, uh, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist, and we, we share a meal together. It's, some, it's these emblems, it's, it's uh, bread, it's cracker, it's juice, and it's a very, very, very special time for me and for us as a church to come together, remember what God did so long ago when he became flesh and came to this earth. And I know for me, meal, meals are special. That's something my, my wife had to learn when we met that really, you know, I mean, er everything I do is, is I'm on my way to a meal, I'm leaving a meal, I'm thinking about the next meal, um, and it's just, that's just how it is. But, you know, I, when you read, that's how it was for Jesus. He was leaving a meal, headed to a meal, about to prepare a meal, do all these things, because great things happen when we gather around a table, especially a table where the Lord is present, and we are all invited, and we remember Jesus. Jesus Christ, the reason for our being, the reason for our living, the reason for our existing, the reason for our being in these chairs and these pews today is Jesus Christ because of the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the power and the presence of his Holy Spirit living within the word, within this room here, because we're here, and best of all, within his people. And that's what we celebrate today. As we take this bread, cup, we celebrate that together. We are one with Jesus. Let's go to God and pray. God, again, I am, I am so thankful to be here, to be in your presence to be in the presence of people of like mind who just who, who love you, Lord, and just seek to please you and seek to praise you. And we all look different. We come from different places and different homes, different cities. And, and Father, you uh, make us all unique. But we're all made in your image. And we're all children of the King. And Jesus is our Savior. And we just want to say thank you right now for his body that was given for all of you and for all of me. And we love you, and we celebrate this bread right now. We love you, God. It's in Jesus' name. Amen.
pray with me again. God, I, my prayer is that uh, you will make this time that we get to share every week, that you will make it uh, come alive, make it fresh, and make it new, and challenge us to, to dive even deeper into what this moment means and how this moment shapes and forms um, everything about our lives, our walk, our talk, uh, our being. We'll read in your word about this time and find books on the Lord's Supper and just what a special, special, special moment this is during the week that we celebrate over your body and your blood and we consume that and transforms us more and more into your son's likeness. And um, so Lord, we just meditate on that right now as we take these things and just pray, God, that you speak to us at this moment about your son and his majesty and his glory and his humility and his divinity and his humanity when he was here and what that meant for us, that he suffered and felt the same things that we do and how it makes it so much more special when we come around this table together. God, we thank you again. We love you. Thank you for the blood of Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend, who would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men? Oh, you rescue the souls of men. Counselor, Comforter, keeper, spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, we've hopelessly lost the way. You are the one that we pray. You give the healing and grace our hearts always hunger for. Oh, our hearts always hunger for. Yes. Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your you find us falling before your throne and oh we're falling before your throne and you are the one that we praise you are the one we adore and you give the always hunger for, oh, our hearts always hunger for, 
Before I say something about Fuel the Vision, I just want to say something to the seniors and how excited we as a faith family are for you and, and to the parents and to the grandparents. Um, thank you for allowing your children to be such an integral part of this place and to have blessed our lives for these years. So we're excited about their future. And I just wanted to say that before I talk about this Fuel of Vision. Um, I've had a chance over the se last several months to, to share with you uh, uh, information and details about Fuel the Vision, and I've, I've called them Fuel the Vision moments. And so uh, this Fuel the Vision moment, I'm just going to say you may have been wondering, uh, what happens now? Where do we go from here? Well, today, Brant is going to come up here in just a little bit, and he is going to announce what we together as a family have committed to this process. Um, but in a couple of weeks, on June the 1st, we're going to have First Fruit Sunday, and that's when our giving begins, and there are going to be envelopes that are specifically made out for Fuel the Vision, and in coming weeks, you'll see them, they'll be in the back of the pews in front of you, and that's going to make the offering for Fuel the Vision specifically much easier, and it'll help our accounting people to keep those uh, records straight. Um, you'll also be receiving one of those in the mail in the next week or two before June 1st so that you'll have some explanation in that and, and be prepared for June the 1st, which is two weeks from today, which is first fruits, and that's the time where the giving begins for the next three years over and above our contribution. So today is a day of great celebration, a time where we come together as a family in joyous praise for God our Father, for what he's done through our lives collectively in this place. And, and for one, I tell you, I couldn't be happier to have walked beside and to have been able to talk to so many people and to answer questions and to talk about what this body is planning on doing. Uh, but it's a transition. We're moving from the time where we prayed and we studied together and we committed in our hearts what we're going to do as individuals and as a family, and now we move into the next phase. And, and, and that is being stewards over what the gift that God has given us is. And so because of that, it gives me real confidence that we have people of such high integrity that are going to help us walk through that process. And one of those guys is our brother and a dear friend of mine, Brant Holiday. And so I'm going to call Brant up now. I'm going to let him share with us what this family has committed together, and let him speak a little more to us about this. Good morning, church. Uh, Kevin mentioned it being an exciting day, and uh, it truly is that, it, but it's really more than that. It's, it's really an exciting time for this church. Um, this is the culmination of several years of work, frankly. Uh, Brett and the leadership team have been uh, working to revision with Love Connect Serve, and one of the next steps in this process was this capital campaign. And, you know, as you look at uh, the graduates today, and I know that there's a baby dedication, you know, what part of today is is a commitment to that next generation. Um, and so the additional work to be done, uh, additional outreach to be done. And so it's a very exciting, a very exciting moment. And before I announce the number, um, you know, I wanted just to comment on the process. For just a second um, we, we met with some consultants as many of you know uh, very early on in this process a couple guys from Nashville and when they met with us for the first time they said you know this is gonna sound cliche but what this is gonna be about is faith building not fundraising and said oh yeah sounds great uh, but but the reality of it is as cliche as it might sound I mean that that's exactly that is exactly what has gone on here it's gone on for me 
I know from specific people that I've had the blessing and opportunity to talk to about this process and just uh, about the funds and those things that, you know, you just see the participation um, as a faithful reflection of what's going on in people's hearts. Um, you know, through, through this process, I'll say that I know that there's been some healing as well. Um, and I know that in just the overall sense that I feel is that uh, there's just a rekindled sense of ownership from so many people in this place. And so th that's what makes it so exciting. Um, and, you know, I appreciated uh, Steve saying, saying something. And, you know, I, I look at two specific guys who have blessed my life in this process as well. And that's in, in, in Mike Ermert and Steve Castleman. Um, you know, I share a lot of my life with those two guys, and I was so pleased that they would be, uh, that they were willing to take on significant leadership roles in this process. You know, Mike Ermert, uh, when you get Mike Ermert turned on to something and fired up with his passion about something, it, it's going to go well. And in fact, I'll tell you, the consultants that we used said that the early commitment process that, that, that we implemented here was the most organized process uh, that they'd ever seen in any church, and uh, that didn't surprise me at all. Um, but also, just to, to, to watch uh, Steve Castleman, uh, our new, our newest shepherd, uh, and in fact, really, w w efforts were made to not have Steve have a significant leadership role in this process, just so that he could integrate into being a shepherd more. But wow, to see that man take on the role of shepherd and lead this and, and, and let the body see what he is capable of. It's just been a tremendous blessing to me. Um, and I appreciate him so much for that. So, you know, over the past couple of weeks as the cards have come in, I've had my shoes and socks off and I've been using my fingers and toes and been counting over and over again to make sure the number that I have is correct. And uh, I'm so excited to be able to present to you today the number and the count of $2,481,904. Amen. <laughs> now, praise God for that. This is so exciting to be a part of it. And this, uh, you know, getting, getting to this point and getting to this number is certainly an important step. Uh, this reflects the commitments. And so now it, it, it's time to get going, right? Uh, and so, you know, Steve mentioned over the next few weeks what will happen. Uh, June the 1st will be First Fruits Sunday. Uh, he mentioned the envelopes. Also know that um, the online giving is, is available. So if you go to the website, homewoodchurch.org, there is a giving uh, link that you, can, um, that you can hit and you can uh, give your fuel division contribution there as well. Uh, he mentioned the envelopes, and you know, if you just write on your check to maybe in the four section, put FTV or something like that, uh, so that we'll be able to easily keep track of that. We, we have opened a separate bank account, and so every dollar that comes in for Fuel Division will we'll, uh, go through the separate bank account. Uh, one of the important aspects of the campaign is paying down debt. And so what we will do is each month, after we have accumulated some of the contributions for that month, we'll, uh, we'll make an additional payment out of this Fuel Vision account to pay down the debt. Um, we're still talking about and thinking about ways to uh, keep the communication open. And so, you know, start to look for things in the pew notes as we go. And then quarterly, you know, there'll be some different kinds of updates that we'll get. But we certainly want this to be a transparent process for everyone. We're committed to doing it exactly the way that we've said it was going to be done. The design team is going to start meeting as early as today to uh, work on how, how the other funds are going to be spent. And so you'll start seeing things in that regard um, as well. So as we take our contribution today, um, let's just thank, let's thank God for what a special day this is. Father, we just praise your name. We are so blessed to be part of this uh, church at Homewood, um, to have our families and friends to be here, to share life together is such a blessing, and we thank you for being in that walk with us and leading us and being faithful to us. And today is just such a clear expression of that, and you're blessing us with this uh, Fuel Division campaign commitment, and we thank you for that. 
Father, we just pray that you will continue to guide every decision, for we want uh, the use of these funds to be only for your glory, to make this place a place attractive to um, people who need you so that we can reach out and be more effective in our community and be more effective in this world. Father, we, we pass these trays right now with our, with our contributions, and uh, we recognize that it's yours. We thank you for the blessing that we have, and we're excited about today. And it's through Jesus, your precious son, that we pray. Amen. At this time, we'd like to dismiss our children who are in ages 4 through 2nd grade. Uh, if they can begin making their way back to children's worship, uh, they'll have a time that is prepared for them back there. And, uh, and also, you know, this is one of the, the opportunities that we have uh, every year to celebrate our graduating seniors. And so our youth minister, Justin Peach, is going to come up at this time, and we're going to recognize uh, our seniors. You know, it's, it's just neat to see if, if you've got kids or you've had kids and you know one of them is going to this practice and the other is going to that practice there's just a lot that's going on in a family and today is one of those days we just have a lot going on in our family and we're celebrating all of it uh, because of what Jesus has done so Justin's going to come up and uh, he's going to lead us through how we're going to recognize our seniors today and uh, you'll notice in your worship guide you've got a handout that has a little blurb on every senior if you want to direct your attention to that We were blessed last night as a church to get to honor our seniors. Um, it was a great night, a great night of fellowship, a uh, great night to be surrounded around a table and around friends and family that, that we get the privilege to lift up our seniors. And reading through this, you will see um, through our uh, handout, that they have been here, majority of them have been here 18 years, that they have been a part of this church. Um, and, and it is amazing to see how well that this church has, has surrounded these students and has loved these students. Last night, I got to share a little bit on Luke 10. And on Luke 10, Jesus sends out 72 he says, you're going to go ahead of me, and you are going to share the good news. You're going to go to towns before me. And I love in that passage where, where Jesus says, you're going to go here, and there's a purpose for you to go, and your purpose is to share my good news, is to, is to be the hands and feet of Christ. He says, you're going to go to this place. You're going to go to this town. And God says, you, you have a specific place that you're going to go and these seniors have that whether it's a new state a new town a new dorm a new school a new job they have a new place and then in the beginning of Luke 10 in verse 1 he says I'm going to send you two by two and he says I'm going to give you people and God has given these seniors some great people within Homewood Church a lot of you have seen these students grow up. You have held them in the nursery. You have taught Sunday school for them. You have chaperone trips, which I'm sorry if you had to chaperone some of these. Chaperone trips. You have walked alongside them. You have prayed with them. You have been friends of their entire family. And this church has surrounded these seniors, and what a blessing. But it doesn't stop. This is not as they walk up and we pray for them and we, and we send them out. This is not a time for us to say, okay, you're done. We're going to stop being your family. We are, still, we are still the family for these seniors. 
And so not, so not only is this charge for the seniors, but it is for us here at Homewood that we continue to pray for them, that we walk alongside them in their new journey, that we help them out in any way we can, because we are a family. We are a family. At this time, we're going to have each a senior and their mom and dad come up, and we have a Bible, um, something small, but, but we have a Bible that we want to give them uh, and to present them. And to the seniors, I know this sounds very cliche, but use this Bible. Um, I was blessed when I was a senior. I didn't, um, I didn't really go to church when I graduated from, college, or from high school. But I had a friend of mine, mom, who gave me this Bible for a senior graduation gift. And I use this Bible so much. It's a little worn. I may need to get it reworked on. But I, I love this Bible as a gift. Use this Bible. Take notes in this Bible. Let it be a part of your life. Put it in your book bag, if we even carry book bags anymore. But let it be a part of you. And it's something small from us just to say that here at church, we truly love you. And we are still praying for you. We'll have Cole, Cole Chiselko, and his family come up. Cole is graduating from Hoover High School. We have Jack Clark. Jack is also graduating from Hoover High School. We have Haley Haggard. Haley is also graduating from Hoover High School. Hoover is going to miss these three. We have Lauren Hallmark. Lauren is graduating from Pelham High School. We have Mary Morgan Maddox. Mary Morgan is graduating from Oak Mountain High School. We have Kelly Stewart. Kelly's also graduating from Oak Mountain High School. I've asked Steve, I've asked Steve Brandon Shepard, Steve Brandon to come forward and just to say a blessing over these seniors and also for their family. Dear God our Father, we're so thankful for blessing us with these families and these seniors, for giving us the opportunity to see them grow up into the uh, fine young men and women that we see today. Father, bless them as they graduate and, and go on to work in college. May your spirit be strong in them and may they grow in their faith and their trust in you. Father, we pray that they will always keep you first in their lives, that they will always love others and show your love for others, that they will be your hands and feet to the, the friends that they <clears throat> make in this next part of their life. Father, we pray for their parents that you'll give them peace as, uh, as their homes are emptier. Father, thank you so much for all the blessings of life. And on wonderful days like this, we just see your glory and the miracle of uh, life and the miracle of the blessings of uh, Christian fellowship and family. Through Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's give a let's give a pop our seniors.
Praise God. And as they make their way back to their seat, Brecian's going to come up and lead us in power in the blood. So stay standing and uh, let's continue to celebrate. Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. There's power in the blood. And would you for evil of victory win? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Wonderful day, a day full of celebration. Uh, so good to see these seniors up here and, and what all they've accomplished. And I, I do hope you'll take some time to review the insert in the worship guide and, and see all that these young folks have done and what God is going to continue to do uh, in their lives. And I just wanted to have a brief word today as we've been in our series entitled 24 as we've been walking through the book of Luke, and we've been walking through backwards. There's 24 chapters in the book of Luke, and today, as is, is I've wrestled with Luke 22 this past week, had a few words uh, for our seniors, but it's one of those conversations that I assure you you want to eavesdrop in on, because it's a conversation that all of us need to be reminded of. And so if you have your Bibles, pull them out, pull out your smart device, and let's turn to Luke chapter 22. And as I was reflecting on this, um, we'll get to the verse in just a minute. You can pull that down, Arthur. But, but as I was reflecting on this particular passage, and, and I was thinking about a few things that I hope that our seniors will take with them from this place, uh, a few things that I, I hope that they will, they will remember and, and reflect on. But, but as I started reflecting on these things, they're really things that we all need to, to think about and reflect on on a daily basis and the first thing you'll see on the screen here in just a moment is that the resurrection is real. And so you notice that kind of the, the theme for this whole series has really been beginning with the end in mind. And the end is this, is that the tomb is empty. I don't know if anybody has seen anybody other than 
a little kid pop out of this tomb or not, but the, but the, tomb, is, the tomb is empty, I assure you. It is empty. And the resurrection is real, and there's resurrection power. And, and I hope we don't soon forget that. Because we hear that sometimes, and it just goes right over our head, and we forget how, how powerful that is. And it reminded me a few months ago when I had gone down to our garage to get in our car, and I took my two-year-old Sadie and got in the car, and, I, and we were about to go on a long trip. And so I decided, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be the, the best dad in the world, go ahead and get the two-year-old in the car, and then that way Mama can finish up, and she can come down and get in the car. And, and, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the battery on so that we can watch a DVD while we're waiting for Mom. Now, let me go ahead and preface this by saying that my wife had warned me not to do that. It was a cold day. The battery was already a little bit cold. We ran the DVD. I promise it was only like one or, or 15 minutes. It was not, it was not very long, but, but, but come to find out, as soon as Mom got down and we got in the car and I turned the click, guess what? Nothing. It didn't start. Now, gratefully, we had uh, a friend of ours, uh, Brother Jeff Lawrence, come over, and, and he, he resurrected the Acadia. Uh, I mean, he... He got these, uh, these jumper cables, put them on there, and it was, it was resurrected, and you just saw all of a sudden something that was lifeless and didn't have power to something that had power in life once again. And that, that illustration is just horrible <laughs> because it pales in comparison to the resurrection power that we have within each and every one of us. Paul tells us in Ephesians 1 that that same power that rose Jesus from the dead is in you. That same power, if you were in Christ, and over 30 times in the book of Ephesians, Paul uses this phrase, in Christ, 216 times in the New Testament, he uses this phrase, in Christ, but if you were in Christ, that resurrection power, seniors and all of us, is in you. It's in you. And so let's, let's not quickly forget that. I love how my brother Randy Harris says it. He says, that, uh, he says that God's team wins. You have to pick a team. Don't be stupid. The resurrection is real, folks. It's real. And it affects each and one, every one of us. And so as we jump into Luke 22, I'm going go, to go to verse 59. And I want you to read this with me. About an hour later, another asserted, certainly this fellow talking about Peter was with him, talking about Jesus, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed, and then the Lord turned, and he looked at Peter. Can you imagine that look, that glance, that glance from Jesus? The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter, and then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him, before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside, the word says, Peter went outside, and he, and he wept bitterly. And, and here's the second thing I want you to catch really, really quickly. I want you to qu catch that Christ's followers are not perfect. And a lot of times we, we come in this room and we think that, that, that Christians are supposed to clean up and wear their nice stuff and be perfect. And the reality is, is that we are not perfect. But you know what is amazing about Peter's story? Is that it didn't end there. Because earlier in the chapter, Jesus tells him that this is going to happen. He says, the devil is going to sift you as wheat. But, but here's what's going to happen. He said, when you turn back, aren't you thankful Jesus knows? He says, when you turn back, Strengthen your brothers. He's already given them this, this word of encouragement. When he knows that Peter's going to deny him, he's already given this word of encouragement. And let me tell you something, seniors. Let me tell you something, everybody in this. I don't mean to sound prophetic, but, but in the words of Jesus, you're probably going to deny Jesus sometime. Now, it may not be a public disownership of Jesus where you stand up with a microphone like me and you say, I disown Jesus, but what about at your workplace? When there's a word of encouragement, there's a word of hope to be said, and you say nothing. What about at school when there's somebody who is sitting beside themselves and, and needs some hope and some, some resurrection power, and you pass by because it's not cool to sit with that person? What about the times that you sin in your anger? Oh, it may not be a pub public declaration, but my friends... 
you will disown Jesus. You will deny him at some point. And aren't you thankful, though, for resurrection power? Aren't you thankful that, that the tomb is empty? Aren't you thankful that that very disownership is what Jesus died for? Aren't you thankful for that? And so remember that no Christ follower is perfect. But we live in that tension, don't we? We live in that tension because we are striving to be like Christ. We're not striving to be not perfect. We're striving to be like Christ. And so we live in that tension. But we need to remind ourselves that God gives us grace. And so we look in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, and, and we see these words of Jesus. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. That's where his power is made perfect, in your and mine, weak, mine weakness. And, and so here, here's the next one is that, uh, that his grace is sufficient. Jesus said so. His grace is absolutely sufficient for you. And what a clear reminder that is for us. Now we jump down and, and Luke, keep going backwards a little bit with me and look at uh, Luke chapter 22, verse 41 and 42. It says, Jesus, he withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them. For me, that would be about 10 feet. For some of you, that would be 100 yards. But, but he, a stone's throw, he withdrew. And what did he do? He knelt down and he prayed. Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. And so, so he, here's the takeaway. Jesus prayed. Take a hint. If the Son of God had to pray, if the Son of God had to have this connection with the Father, if the Son of God had to go before his Father and have this relationship in such a way that he talked to him, why don't we take a hint? Why don't we spend time in our prayer closet? It's what we've encouraged each other to do all through our Fuel the Vision campaign, that we spend time in the Word, we spend time in the prayer closet. Are you having that time with God? We go down a few verses before and verse 25 Jesus said to them the kings of the Gentiles they lorded over them and those who exercise authority over them call themselves benefactors but you you're not to be like that instead the greatest among you should be like the youngest and the one who rules like the one who serves for who is greater the one who is at the table or the one who serves is it not the one who is at the table but I am among you as one who serves catch that and, and here's the here's the big idea for this one the big idea is this is that we're to be different follow Jesus if following Jesus was easy everybody would be doing it perfectly but follow Jesus he didn't come to to be served he came to serve and I love this verse as we kind of close out here. Luke 22, 7 and 8. Then came the day of unleavened bread on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. Jesus sent Peter and John saying, go and make preparations for us to eat the Passover. I loved Brecian's word just a few moments ago that Jesus was always going to a meal or coming from a meal or planning a meal or getting around a table and celebrating why because he is a relational God he's a relational being and so catch this seniors don't miss this Jesus throws the best parties can I get an amen Jesus throws the best parties what kind of God starts his ministry with a party Look in the first of John. What does he do? He changes water to wine at a party. Luke 14 and 15, nine parties are mentioned in those two chapters. Jesus throws the best parties. God invented the party. But here's the reality, folks. Satan is the party pooper. He absolutely is. Satan cannot create anything. He did not create parties. He did not create pleasure. God created it. What Satan does is distorts it. And so get this. My friend C.S. Lewis, who I never met, but I call him my friend. C.S. Lewis wrote this book called Screwtape Letters. 
And this, this, this uncle demon is talking to this nephew demon. And you know what the uncle demon says to the nephew demon? He says, never forget that when we are dealing with any pleasure in a healthy and normal and satisfying form, we are, in a sense, on the enemy's ground, talking about God. We're on God's ground. He, God, made the pleasure. All of our research so far has not enabled us to produce one pleasure. All we can do is encourage the humans to take the pleasures which our enemy God has produced and at times or in ways or in degrees which he, God, has forbidden. That's all Satan can do is take the party and distort it. And so he does. Seniors, church, you'll be encouraged to distort the party. But don't be fooled. Jesus throws the best parties, the absolute best parties. But here's the problem, church. Here's the problem is that we're realistic people. Or maybe a better word is cynical. (laughs) You can't read the caption that says cynicism. He learned it from watching you. And here's the definition of cynical. It's believing that people are motivated by self-interest, distrustful of human sincerity or integrity. That cynicism is the currency of our day. That what bothers me the most is that is it possible that the church is oftentimes more cynical than the world? Is that possible? That the church is oftentimes more cynical than the world. That we are the people of God that have every reason to celebrate. That we are the people that have the resurrection power living within us. And when the world looks at us, do they see a group of people who are cynical? Or do they see a group of people who are celebrating? Man, that worship leader was over-celebrating a little bit. Ah. Do they see a group of people who are celebrating? Do they see a group of people who have, who have tapped into the resurrection power of Jesus? So seniors, my encouragement to you is don't let me or anybody else cause you to become cynical. But may you live a life of celebration. Because we see in the Jesus story that to to be a Christian is to be involved in celebration. And the resurrection says this. The resurrection says that one day every sad thing will be made new. Every sad thing will be made new. That in God's economy, nothing is lost. But there's reason to celebrate and resurrection says, in some mysterious way, darkness doesn't win the day. Resurrection says, it's time to celebrate. And Jesus is God's invitation to the party. So we're just going to close out our time celebrating in worship. And Brecian's going to come back up and, and lead us in a time of worship. And, and then we're going to go and we're going to celebrate more in the gym And we're going to gather around tables, and we're going to have a meal, and we're just going to celebrate what God is doing in our lives. And even in your brokenness, hang with me, even in your brokenness, even in darkness, even in times of chaos and confusion, we serve a God who calls us to celebration. That we can live a life of celebration. Will you be standing with me at this time? And as Brishan comes up, I want to just pray a word over us. God... We pause where we are, standing before your holy presence, and we confess our cynicism to you. God, we just say this morning that we're sorry. But God, we are reminded that we serve, serve you, a God who has given us resurrection power. And so, Father, may we, may we change not by our own power, but by that power. 
I pray this morning that you will change our hearts, that you will change us and form us and shape us to be living sacrifices for you. I, I'm grateful for these seniors today, that we see life in them, that we see breath, and we just pray, God, that they will continue to, to follow you in every way. Thank you for Jesus. It's in his name we pray. Amen. As Brecian is leading these songs, there'll be a shepherd back here in room 113. If you want to take just a moment and spend some time in prayer with one of our shepherds, please do that during this time, and then we'll close in just a few moments. Glory to God, glory to God, all glory to God forever. We sing glory to God, all glory to God. All glory to God forever. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to me, you were the King of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were. And now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing. Glory to God. Oh, glory.
Thank I want to say thank words. you to Breeshan for being and, here today. Uh, man, worship is, is, my, is, is our response to the revelation of God's glory, goodness, mercy, grace, power, and wonder, and all those things. And, Amen. And that comes out not just here, but I love it, man, how you said in our lives. Amen. The way we treat people, the way we love people. And uh, so worship, man, that en just it engulfs so much. And uh, this is just one part of it. And I'm so thankful to have been here with you this morning and well, to sing. We're grateful to have you worship. and your so, family here with us. Uh, you. We're going to close with just a song or two. Uh, but I did want to let you know we want everybody in this room to participate in today's meal. A great meal has been prepared. It's a Thanksgiving meal. And it's, uh, it, and it's May. I mean, come on. Turkey. And I mean, we all kind of good stuff in the gym. Uh, so as soon as we dismiss here... I want you to make your way. It's a free meal. You don't have to pay anything. So guests of ours, you're, please, hey, Chili's ain't got nothing on what, what's in the gym. I, I promise, all right? So head to the gym uh, in just a, a few moments. Uh, I want you to let you know that there's uh, entry points. If you go down the hall and the, kind of the regular entry over by the fireside room, but there's also another entry point. If you want to, if you want to get started quicker, go around the back way. And if you know the back way, go around the back way. There's tables and lines and serving lines there as well. So we promise uh, that you'll be served quickly. Uh, but uh, we're going to have some entertainment in there. We've got a bluegrass group that's come to just have some entertainment with us this afternoon. It's going to be a great, great afternoon. So, uh, so please make, make plans to stay and do our, our, our celebration time in just a minute. Brishan, again, thank you for being here. Close us out. Thank you. Okay, we're going we're gonna to close out here with a song. It's a hymn. Uh, we're going to skip past this one, and, and uh, uh, if you ask me, well, I can sing all day long, and I, and I normally keep us over at Highland, and so I'm trying, trying to my best to respect your time today, and so uh, my wife's like, thank you, thank you, that's very sweet, that's good, um, but uh, let's, like a, somebody on the field, somebody doing their job really well, let's leave it all here like this is the last time we get to do this together. Don't hold anything back. And I love this song. This is our, this is our cry. Everything in the world is going to change around us. Our, our kids are going to get older. Uh, things are going to happen, and the world is going to change. But God is constant. Jesus is constant. His love never changes, never leaves us. And I love it. I love it. Church, let's sing it out. Sing it with all your heart this morning. Let's sing Hold to God's Unchanging Hand. Time is filled with sweet transition, and all of earth and moon can stand. So build your hopes on things eternal, and you gotta hold to God's unchanging hand. Hey, and you gotta hold to His hand, to God's unchanging hand. Feel out and now hold to His hand, to God's unchanging sing it out. So trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever you may bring, yes, and did my earthly friends forsake, we will still more closely to him cling. Oh, church, now you gotta hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You gotta hold to his hand. Your 
so will you. You got a hold to his hands, to the Lord's changing hand. You got a hold to his hand. Come on, church, sing it. come to you now. We offer this time to you. We offer this day to you. We offer this week to you. God, we offer our lives to you as a sacrifice of praise. What we do here is only a culmination of the way that we have, we have already worshipped you during the week, the time that we have already spent with you during the week in prayer. Uh, if we engage through song, through reading, through study, through uh, evangelizing through meditating on your word. Father, this is just a culmination of the time that we have already been in your presence and should be so sweet for us in a time of celebration, even in the midst of turmoil and struggle. God, we bring these things to you. We lay them at your feet and we say, take these because you promised that your yoke is light. Father, we love you. I thank you for this church. I pray blessings over them. This money that was given is just, just blessings being returned back to you. Father, we thank you for your provision, this food that is about to be eaten. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the air in our lungs. Most of all, we thank you for the love of Jesus Christ that fills us like nothing else can and causes us, us to be people we could never be without Jesus Christ. Help us to live boldly, speak boldly, love boldly, and worship. Worship every single day, God. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray this prayer. Amen. Shake hands and be friendly. God bless you. He is able.